This is the Chiefs official podcast network. Take advantage of the day. Okay. When you get an opportunity in this game, you make a play. The playmakers on three. One, two, three. Playmakers. Touchdown, Kansas City. The Chiefs are right in the thick of it, baby. Here we go for our fourth edition of Defending the Kingdom. And this one will be uh, the tease. Tobe, teams, training camp. Because training camp is imminent. Chiefs fans have been waiting for this uh, since the end of the AFC Championship game. And they're about ready uh, to open the gates in St. Joe here at the end of July. But before we get there, we've kind of the first three podcasts, we have looked at Andy Reid's influence overall in the league and with the Chiefs franchise. Then we looked at what's next for Mahomes. Then we looked at Steve Spagnuolo and the impact of the defense that it could have in 2019. Sean, with special teams, it's always kind of this parenthetical thought, or it's like, oh, yeah, the scraps on the table or the leftover biscuit. Um, For Andy Reid and Dave Tobe, and I'll throw Rod Smith in here as assistant, I think a lot of, the Chiefs have really, when you look at the aggregate of six years, have been the best special teams unit in the NFL. Coverage, returns. What about the Chiefs being so good at special teams and how they can try to replicate that in 2019? Well, when you talk about special teams, man, it, it's something that's near and dear to my heart because I was a, you know, as a linebacker, I was, I was what would you consider a core special teamer. You know, that I mean, I played uh, a vital role in all th- four phases, uh, punt, punt return, kickoff, and kick return. Um, not leaving out, you know, the extra points and field goals and stuff like that. But when you talk about the core four units of special teams, um, that's pretty much what linebackers are all about. Uh, coming from a small school, small school linebacker, um, you know, my first year of the league, and basically I made the team um, based off of um, um, using special teams. But I have a, a history with Coach Tobes. Um, Coach Tobes was part of the uh, 2002 Eagles team. Um, at that time we had Coach Harbaugh there. Uh, he was the special teams coordinator, and so I was trying to work my, my butt off to earn a position on that team with, with Coach Harbaugh, and uh, I had a lot of good tutelage from um, from, from Coach Tobe. Um, so I, I knew what kind of uh, um, special teams coordinator he was going to be whenever he got the chance. Um, and it's just amazing with, with such attention to detail um, and given the, uh, the, the type of athletes he's been given um, while he was here with um, Coach Andy Reid, the uh, uh, – the, the, such such playmakers um, that can really uh, you know, do 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 so many things when it comes to special teams uh, to give that edge to the Chiefs uh, the Chiefs offense. Here's a number I put I tweeted this out earlier, but it it just gives you an indication of what the influence of Dave Tobe is and and the emphasis that Andy Reid puts on it. In the six years since Andy Reid has been head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs have 11 returns for touchdowns, four kickoff returns. This is just regular season. Gotcha. Four uh, kickoff returns for touchdowns, seven punt returns. That's a total of 11 return touchdowns. They have yielded in six years zero. (laughs) The opponent has no punt returns for touchdowns or kickoff returns for touchdowns. You talk about it, and we're going to get into this a little bit later in the podcast, about what this means to make the team or not to make the team your case, or looking at these guys in the close battles of 19. But I'm going to take it even a broader view. This is what tips the scales when you have even teams or you get, you know, who's going to win a division or this league is so balanced, who can pull that off? 11 touchdowns to zero Mm. and the explosive nature of how special teams can be to tip the scales. We talk about, yeah, it's not only tips of scale, but when you talk about Coach Tobe and his, uh, his excellent record as far as special teams coach, I think in the last uh, 13 consecutive seasons, his special teams unit has been a you know, top five unit uh, 13 consecutive years. You, you don't find that in any position offensively or defensively. Um, and to take a, a you know a, a third of the game, I think I saw somewhere where uh, in 2018 um, the average NFL game there were 27 special team snaps per game, and if you can take those 27 snaps and have somebody who's working on it like Coach Tobes uh, to the nuances where that is multiple time the majority of the time favoring the Chiefs, we talking about field position, like you're talking about touchdowns, we're talking about 
directly relating, directly being a uh, direct factor of points putting on the board and uh, keeping other teams from putting points on the board. Average start field position. I think Chiefs were number two in the league last year and average – uh, maybe number three in the league as far as average start position, and our opponents was second worst. And you take, you know, that, a lot of teams, you know, they take special teams practice for granted. It's just a let's kick a couple of field goals. Let's make sure we have 11 guys on the field. Um, we're going to get ready for offense and defense. But when you ignore that third phase, that third uh, factor, um, you're doing your team a disservice. And I think Andy Reid has shown Coach Tobe the utmost respect by some of the draft players we draft, some of the players we acquired, and then the emphasis that is given Coach Tobes to really spend time on making sure that our, our players know special teams, know the rules, um, uh, know how to avoid penalties when it comes to special teams, and then being able to go out there and be a positive factor for us to win. There's other forgotten plays because we don't play fantasy football with special teams, and we forget. We see the 50 touchdowns and 5,000 yards of Mahomes. What we forget is, is now we do remember Tyreek Hill's 91-yard punt return to start the season. Basically, Mm. it set the tone not only for that game, but for the entire season. But we forget later in that game, the Chargers are starting to rally a muff punt that was recovered by the Chiefs. Pittsburgh, early in the game, remember Mahomes shocking the Steelers fans and being uh, Star Wars, that whole thing that we saw on YouTube. People forget there was a huge special teams play, muff punt recovery. Uh, you can go the Denver game at home. A missed 55-yard field goal set up a short field for the Chiefs. And then at Cleveland, a block punt by Damian Williams. Uh, Tremont Smith, 97-yard return for kickoff return against New England. No touchdown. But to your point here, and, and then the other numbers, uh, punt return average, the Chiefs were tied for third in the league. Kickoff return, Tremont Smith ended up being fourth in the league. So – just the nature of the forgotten plays and how special teams are important. You mentioned uh, Dave Tobe and attention to detail, but I want to ask you, Andy Reid gives ample time for Dave Tobe to work. I have seen it where other head coaches are like, yeah, we got to do this, but it's not exactly a priority, or I will cut you some time. I'm going to slip this time over here. Andy Reid gives ample time and understands what Dave Tobe needs to do. And that, that, you know, that type of attention to detail, that type of mentality, players know it. They can feel it. So imagine you being on a team where you're not a starter on offense or defense. Maybe you're not even a second string guy, but you're a third string guy. You're a special teams guy. And the head coach doesn't even uh, give you uh, the type of meeting time necessary to learn your position and to go over all your things. You're, 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 you're expected to kind of learn it on the fly. Uh, a lot of times the terminology is, oh, we'll learn that on the field. We're not going to go over it in the meeting. We don't have meeting time to go over it. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and walk through it on the field. And you guys can, you know, because it's teams, you can just pick it up while we're out there. I, I, I doubt that happens here in, uh, with the Chiefs system. I think that the special teams is seen as one of three phases. All three phases are equally important, offensively, defensively, and special teams. And so sometimes you feel like players um, who aren't starting on the offensive defense see themselves as almost like second-class citizens in some organizations. But I think with Coach Tobe and the amount of respect he gives his, uh, we call them guys at the uh, tip of the spear, um, when you're a core special teams player, we call about we talk about tip of the spear is because when you throw that spear, that point, that's the first thing that uh, pierces another team's armor. And when the team comes to your building, the first play of every game is going to be a special teams play. Before every offensive drive, it's it's a special teams play. Before every defensive drive, so the de- the, the special teams they set the tempo for that defensive series or for that offensive series. And I guarantee you. Uh, Trapping a team inside the 10-yard line, mm. that offense walking to their own goal line to start that drive, it, it, it takes some of the, the win out of their sails. Or from an offensive standpoint, going out to the field at the 45 or the 50-yard line after a big punt return from your guys, that gets you a little bit of momentum going, uh, and it puts that other team on their heels. So special teams plays a big part of every drive of every ball game. Now we go to the second quarter, and to end the first quarter, Tobin, Chicago. You could almost argue he got them to the NFC Championship game or beyond, even the Super Bowl, with Devin Hester being so explosive in their coverage units. The second quarter, though, and this deals with, hey, we both love our kids, we got great kids, but this would be the A student getting a B plus Because in 2018, there weren't – I looked this up. This is a stunning statistic – Patrick Mahomes 
was forced to have 75-yard touchdown drives 21 times, beyond 75 yards 16 times. These scoring drives, 86, 89, 82, 79, 95, 92, 83, 95, 91, 82, 80, 83, 84. We know what Mahomes can do. You can go back and listen to the second podcast. But what can Mahomes do if these 80s and 90s become 60s and 65s? If you get the field position and Mm -hmm. give Mahomes less room to travel, and with he's so good being in the red zone, what can that do and it be an area of improvement for the Chiefs in 2019? I think when you're on the radio and you hear people talking on the, um, at the water cooler, they always talk about the, the, the rebound season. How, how do you rebound after a 50-touchdown, 5,000-yard season? And the majority of people who say there has to be some type of correction. It has to be a, you know, he, he can't throw 50 again. It's not going to be 5,000 yards. He's going to regress to the mean. He's going to regress the, to the mean, yeah. But the, the, the positive about that is when you talk about how many opportunities were left out on the field, how many opportunities where he could have uh, done something um, based off of the field position they start with. So if you like you're saying if that if that if our offense can start out at the 20, 25, maybe 30 yard line a few more times instead of at our own 15 or at our own 5 yard line. You think about the offensive play calling. When you're when you're when you when you're back there back up against your, your own goal line, you have to be a little bit more conservative. Uh the quarterback you really worry about pick sixes at that that point. You worry about throwing turnovers, and giving the other team the ball in uh, in scoring position. So sometimes you're not allowed to really uh, uh, um, just play with that reckless abandon, play to your utmost. You have to kind of be very conservative about those play calls. So um, having a special teams unit that is looking forward to like turning that that field position where they get the offense the ball, uh, let's say on the average of the 35, maybe the 40 yard line, and now we're not in that conservative base offense, I believe that will uh, offset any kind of regression when we talk about him returning to the mean. So I, I see the possibility of him uh, not only recouping that same glory of last year, uh, but maybe even increasing uh, some of the efficiency um, of his own game when we talk about Pat Mahomes. Yeah, there's other plays like stopped a fake punt against Cincinnati. So they're oh, kind of yeah. desperate. They run a fake punt. Oops, stopped. Now he gets a short field. But he did. Patrick Mahomes had very few short fields last year. And let's we talk about the 11 over zero early in the podcast, the phenomenal stat. Chiefs 11 return touchdowns, zero for the opponents in six years. There was only one last year. It was the opening game, the opening punt of the season. That was the only time the Chiefs scored on a punt or kickoff return. So it's not only if, can you shorten the field, but if you score in special teams now, all of a sudden, that's just more gunpowder to me for Patrick Mahomes. And I think that first score of the season definitely put the opponents we're facing on there <laughs> on alert. So when 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 you know Tyreek when he scores that first touchdown, you have to consider every opponent for the rest of the season had to look at that film and say, is that the way we want to start a ball game? If not, punt it out of bounds, angle directional punt, give up 20, 15 yards of field position, give, basically give the, the Chiefs a first down and a half just to keep the ball out of one of the explosive returners in the league. And that that's how our offense gets rolled. And I think that probably led to uh, Pat Mahomes' offense being so effective um, um, throughout the year. Well, and, and to your point, that's easier said than done. There was another short field I found the Denver punter wanted to do that. He punted 22 yards. <laughs> there just weren't a lot of short fields, but there, those stuck out. And that guy's trying to you know, punt it away from Tyreek Hill, so watch me do something tricky. Oh, wait a minute. He has a 10-yard punt. I mean, or 22-yard punt in this instance. So just sometimes if you create the image of, like, what's Tobe thinking or what, you know, what are they doing – even that can create some problems for the opponent. Yeah, and it gives some clout, gives some respect to our own punter, uh, Dustin Coker. He, mm. I think he was fourth best in the league as far as pinning the opponent's offense as far as starting position inside the 20, uh, record 48.9% of the time. And I'm trying to pressure the league into changing that stat or at least take it a step further because he is he's the best since he's been in the league at punting inside the 10. Yes. So now I got punts inside the 20. That's one thing. But now if you get it inside the 10, that's an entirely different deal. Oh, yeah, that, that limits your play calling down to <laughs> a fourth of the, the uh, you know calls you think you can make inside the 20. So if you really want to limit or uh, uh, have an offense start with an arm tied behind their back, uh, yeah, have you a punter that can put the ball inside the 10, and then that really lets the defense really get super aggressive uh, and come after them. So, again, now we're at halftime. People have learned now that halftimes in the NFL are short. 
and half times on these podcasts are even shorter. They have learned how to take a one second potty break and uh, get the orange or whatever you need to get back on the field. Because here we go. There it is. Now we're back on the field because it's halftime. And we switch to the third quarter, and that has to deal with the Kansas City Chiefs who got some tight battles on the roster. We're headed to training camp. The area of special teams, you've already we've alluded to the attention to detail, how you can impact a game, you can win a game or lose a game based on special teams, and we've seen the Chiefs do it. Now I'm trying to make the roster wide receivers, razor thin, running backs, linebackers, are your position. The role in a special teams guy, how do you do it? How do you make the team being on special teams? Man, that that, that speaks dear to my heart because coming out in, you know, 1998, man, from University of Richmond, small school linebacker, um, I'm entering the Washington Redskins, and they see me as a, a special teams guy. They see me as a third down linebacker. No real role in first or second down. So I, they've already narrowed my my scope of what I have to learn, my contribution to the team. Uh, but there was three other guys uh, basically in this exact same position as me. Um, two other guys drafted, one guy undrafted, one guy uh, second year um, linebacker out of uh, University of Miami. And then also a, a few big safeties who they feel that could fill that role also. So that's 10 guys basically trying to fight for this one uh, this one position as a third down uh, cover linebacker. Now, where I could set myself apart for those guys is my dedication to teams. How effectively I was at punt block, punt coverage, how effectively I was at kickoff coverage, uh, did I study and know all the nuances on, on all the special teams as far as directional punt, how to cover a punt, how to spread the field, how to vice tackle? Um, was I good enough if needed to to be a gunner on certain situations um, if we were thin in that position? Um, so I really went to my special teams coach and became uh, – <laughs> he became my coach. He became the guy who I sought out after every practice, um, finding some different ways to get better as far as the core special teams. But I knew that was going to be my road. That was going to be my, my, my path to uh, sustaining myself in the NFL long enough for a, a, a opportunity to go after one of the starting linebacker positions. Now, fortunately for me, my second year, that, that opportunity came up. Um, I was making a lot of plays on not only the special teams, but in that in the nickel and dime package. Uh, I was getting my hands on a lot of balls, and they thought about, you know what, this guy probably could be our starting wheel linebacker position. But it was definitely my contribution my first year in the core team's unit that gave them the confidence to even put me out there um, when, it, when, it, when, it, when it came tam- time to ch- try out and the opportunity for that starting linebacker position. And you played in the league 10 years. It opened the ten door years, for you. 10 so, years. I mean, you might have been 10 days if you don't. <laughs> And I was on teams all 10, though. There was never a position, there was never a comfort level where I felt like um, I've made it, I've arrived, and so now I'm just a starter on defense. I was always, for 10 years, I was always a core special teams guy. And to me, that's why you made it 10 years. I mean, just having that mentality. But taking pride in special teams as a player. We talk about coaches giving attention to detail to it, the Chiefs taking pride in it being the best in the league over a six-year span. Matthew Slater of the New England Patriots has made a living doing it. Yes. He's phenomenal when I sit there and watch him on tape. You think about guys like Steve Tasker. We got Jason Avant at the end of his career. Mm -hmm. I always talk about Jason Avant. I wish we had Jason Avant in the Eagles' Jason Avant of the mid-2000s because Coach Reed talks about guys being dirty tough, and I think that's what it takes to be on special teams. But I've also seen the best special teams guys in the league are those – barbershop who take pride in it it's almost a badge of honor for them instead of like some kind of demotion it doesn't take the greatest amount of skill and ability it takes heart the guys that are core special team leaders on their individual teams or units are guys that pretty much have the largest hearts of the uh, of all 53 guys on the team because they are underappreciated they're never they're never really recognized in the national media but they know that they have to fight once every, you know, about 10 plays, the number's going to be called, and they got to take a unit of the other uh, 10 guys to that field, and the pressure's on them. They got to go out there and cover that punt. They got to try to block that kick. They got to get that punt off uh, to create field position. Um, they got to cover that kickoff. It's it's the job that, that the NFL is trying to do away with <laughs> a, a, a segment of the special teams unit because they say it's too dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, back when I played, you had to run through a wall. We had 
three, four guys, offensive linemen, interlocking hands at the 20-yard line and then running right down the field. And guys uh, my size had to try to uh, penetrate that wall and create a, a, a fracture in that wall so that we could tackle that kickoff returner. It was, it, was, it was a job not many people wanted to do, but those that really signed up for it and excelled at it, they were valuable to every team uh, around the league. But I think we're finding a balance there in the league because the, some of the most exciting plays every year in the National Football League – are special teams plays. Exactly. Whether it's a return for a touchdown or a block punt. And so we've seen that the league doesn't want those to go away. It's just to figure out a way to keep them safer or get them safer. And I think that we're finally finding that equilibrium line. But in training camp, one of the things I love to watch because, oh, special teams, period. The horn sounds. Alan Wright honks the horn. Everybody's like, oh, special teams. Ah, how about time to go get a funnel kick? Watch those. Watch those because I want to ask you too. How, I mean, how the league has changed, but you think, okay, you were a linebacker, that's a key area. Those guys are the four core special teams guys. Um, but I've seen running backs. Damian Williams blocked a punt last year against Cleveland, which was brilliant. Uh, now he's kind of the RB1 of, of this committee, so I, we'll see how that you know transform with him being on special teams, but still, running backs, uh, the linebackers, wide receivers. I alluded to that earlier, the position groups to watch in this training camp because it could decide who's in and who's out. When you when you talk about your third or fourth wide out, when you talk about that third or fourth cornerback, um, the third safety, uh, your fourth or you know fifth maybe linebacker, those positions, your, your third tight end, those are the positions where you might have two or three guys from a skill level, from how they can impact your team, um, are pretty even. They're equal. They, they, they can, you can envision both of those guys being on your team as that guy, but you don't have enough roster spots. But then when you talk to Coach Tobe, you talk from a special teams value. Which one of those guys has a position starting on all four units? Which one of those guys, can he envision those guys being a difference maker on special teams? A tip of the spear type guy. A guy who's going to be a leader on special teams. That's going to be the guy that gets the nod. That's the guy who's going to be given that position when you talk about that that uh, one out of 53 spots. And the other guy is going to be unfortunately looking for a job, but um, it, 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 it's tough. Those, those positions um, uh, are, are fought for all through training camp. Every time you see special teams gear up, you have to know in the back of your head, this could be the difference. This could be the, the winning edge that gets me this position and it sends another guy home. And you'll see those com- competitions during training camp being handled thusly. Let me give you an example. Anthony Sherman, if I rented a theater in St. Joe, invited all the fans, and we looked at Tyreek Hill's punt returns for touchdowns, uh, really a lot of the big returns, the key block to start everything, not the one you see downfield at 15 yards, the one key block would be Sherman. His, his ability, not only did we see him do stuff, sausage stuff, but he, he's a, I want to see in camp who's the younger guy that's going to take the badge of courage to be the tip of the spear like you're alluding to, who approaches it like sausage or Sherman because that's to me it's a really way he stayed in the league and the way you play 10 years. But who, as a young guy, wants to say, this is what I do, I'll hang my hat on it. Yeah, everybody comes in, you know, you're, you're a guy who gets drafted, you, you get to a team, they tell you, hey, we got to, you know, we have a vision for you being our, you know, backup this or the, the second safety or the, you know, fourth corner. Um, you know, you get the playbook and they, you know, they expect you to, to, to learn it, absorb it, but they understand there are some rookie mistakes and there's some, you know, growing pains with learning a new position, but not in special teams. Special teams, you guys have been playing the same type of uh, – Punt coverage, kickoff coverage, punt return. You've been doing this all your life. Hmm. And so if you get to training camp and you get your butt whipped one-on-one, you got a veteran guy who's willing to, uh, uh, we call him uncle. He gets up in your grill and make you quit during a play. That shows something. That, sh- that, that shows a little chink in your armor, and that means you need to grow up a little bit. You need to, you need to realize this is a man sport. So uh, I think a lot of good boys, a good young men play college football, and they play it at a high level. They have a lot of talent. But when you, the transition of going from the, NFL, the uh, college days to NFL is this is a man's game. And, and if there's one phase of the game that will show, that will uh, separate the boys from the men, it's special teams. And Tobe and Rod Smith have some awesome drills. One of the things I like to watch is the gunner position and uh, being able to tackle and cover in space. The most, well, not the most, but one of the most underrated plays of the AFC Championship game barbershop. The Chiefs have scored to take a 28-24 lead in the fourth quarter. The ensuing kickoff, so it's right about the two-minute warning. Mm -hmm. 
there is a chance to tackle Cordell Patterson, who takes the Butker kick about two to three yards deep in the end zone. Oh, he's bringing it out. There's a chance to nail him at the 14-yard line. Missed tackle. He runs it out to the 36. That's the touchdown where they take the lead. Chiefs have to scramble to get it back to overtime and kick the field goal to tie it at 31. I'm saying, even with Tom Brady, Gronk, Edelman, all those cats, you tackle the dude at the 14-yard line, you win that game in regulation. It's a different set of play calls. As we said, uh, team starting at the 14, it might take them two or three plays to, to get that extra 10, 20 yards to now switch over to their regular offense. And so you talk about that clock being burned, the possibility of being a three and out right there at the 14, us getting the ball back at the 40-yard line, going to score again. Um, so many possibilities could happen uh, with that play being made. But that, that's the... Uh, well, that that that's 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 how fine a line it is to making a great play on special teams and that and that's something that would never be talked about. You bring that play up is something that no one is in in the, since the game is over with. No one has mentioned that that play as being significant at all. But I bet the 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 core teams guys know they had an opportunity there to make a difference. They had an opportunity to to. to to, to, to swing the momentum to the chief side of the ball on that one play. And that's the intensity uh, and, the, and the, the amount of purpose that you go on, on the field with every time when you're in a special teams unit. So we're in the fourth quarter here getting ready for our Tobe te- uh, teams and training camp. We really haven't touched on the kicker yet, Harrison Bucker. The Chiefs gave a big investment now to him. Um, 72 touchbacks last year led the National Football League. You can either cover those kicks and pooch kick them, try to tackle them inside the 25, or just blast them. Save a play, get the 25, trust your defense. Butker, the investment made in him, and your thoughts on that and how he goes to the next level. And Butker has been phenomenal. You know, we talk about Coach Tobes, and he's been blessed with elite uh, special teams player. He had Robbie go all those years with the Bears. Um, I think he was blessed with being uh, – uh, having a bunch of Pro Bowl guys with um, with the Bears, and now he comes to the Chiefs and kind of reward him with the same thing, um, a, a golden foot kicker. Um, uh, Bucker has been phenomenal for this team. Um, and, and and we talk about playoff teams, teams with the uh, ability to go f- deep in the playoffs. Most of these games come down to a field goal. It comes down to a field goal at the end of the game. And um, how, many, how many times in situations has Bucker – risen up for the Chiefs uh, no matter the distance. I think he only missed three field goals last year and two of them was over 50 yards. Yep. So basically one uh, field goal miss um, shorter than 50. All those opportunities that the head coach didn't even have to blink, didn't have to think about it. We, we knew there was going to be points put on the board um, to help us win the ball game. He's been phenomenal um, since the day he's gotten here and um, he's accepted his job with so much respect and responsibility. Um, I, can, I can't even just I take my hats off to that young man. He is a weapon. So is Colquitt. We already touched on Colquitt. He's going to have training camp battle. They got a kid named Jack Fox in from Rice. Um, met the kid this summer. Interesting kid. Good. But you actually got a new punter in camp in Colquitt and will be out there. So, again, don't go to sleep on special teams at camp. But I'm going to go in an area here as we head to the two-minute warning of the fourth quarter. The long snapper position <laughs> really has changed. Our yes, buddy Kendall Gammon, I think, changed it because, hey, linebacker, you can snap it. Let's all try it. Uh, you try it. You try it. And then teams started to lose games because of it. That's I right. call them the Finnish Carpenters of the National Football League. But here's what fans maybe do not realize. And I don't know what happened on the block punt touchdown against the Colts because the Colts got us on a special teams play. I mentioned no returns for touchdowns in the regular season against the Chiefs in six years. Colts block a punt for a touchdown. Those guys, the snapper, the calls that have to be made, the coverage calls, just like a line offensive lineman, the role of getting your protections down right and a snapper being perfect, not offline, perfect, and then being able to cover enough. We talk about how many times Dustin has put that ball inside the 10-yard line. I think if Dustin was here, he would tell you he gives all the credit to the snapper. Having the ball snapped right in your hands at the right time with the right, right amount of rotations so that he can just drop the ball, um, put a foot on it, and know the guaranteed result's going to be a, a great punt. It has as much to do with his leg as it has to do with the snapper. 
Um, but when we talk about the protection overall, yeah, that snapper takes a lot of credit between the uh, protection man, the up back, uh, making the calls to protect her, letting them know whether he should slide right, slide left, let them know if it's going to be an overload coming one side or another, if there's an extra man in the box or not, so he has to make sure he goes man instead of zone. Um, so many different blocking techniques between a zone block and a man block when it comes to the uh, type of different type of pressures a, a, a punt return team is going to use against you. Um, then that guy has to be he has to be heads up to all that. But his first and foremost, his first priority has to be that snap, that perfect snap back to the punter. If you get the perfect snap and the, um, uh, the, the, the operation time they use now from a from a punter getting it off, it's almost unblockable. Yeah. But that fraction of a second where the ball, the velocity isn't there or it rotates a little bit to the left and it makes the, the punter uh, sidestep a little bit. That gives the defense the opportunity to come in and get a big block. And like we said, well, that's one of the positions that we've been uh, uh, fortunate enough to have a, a, a key component, a really heads-up guy playing that position, a long snapper. We look forward to training camp for there to be a battle at that position, like you said, punter. And uh, luckily, we do have the kicker position locked down for a long term. So It is all worth watching at camp, watch it, every second of it, because it is, in many cases, a fraction of a second. All right, here we go, partner. We've been waiting for this, and we're along with the Chiefs' kingdom because it's time for training camp. What do you want to see globally in this training camp? And uh, I got a defensive background, so I, 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 I got to admit my, my eyes are going to be locked on the defense. I'm, I want to see guys pursuit. I want to see guys hunger to the ball. I want to see guys uh, obsessed about alignment, assignment, all the things you've been able to uh, slow down and, and, and take a hold of as far as defensively. Uh, I want to see guys out there learning because I know I'm going to see the teaching from Spags. I know Coach Merritt, uh, Coach House, I know those guys are going to be teaching, but I want to see guys focused and, and, and concerned about learning the nuances of the defense so they all can play uh, fast and play to their, uh, you know, let all that experience and all that ability, athleticism, I want to see all that being able to be shown over and over. But I also want to see guys uh, from the leaders, I want to see them communicating. And I want to see them pushing guys to the limit. I want to see guys gassing themselves out, uh, 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 pushing themselves to exhaustion. That's what you have to do in camp. You gotta. You, you, you can only build that championship mentality through fire. It's forged through fire. It, it, you're going to fight a little bit. You're going to fight yourself. Yep. Yourself is going to want to quit. You're going to be talking to yourself a little bit during training camp. Is it worth it? Do I need a day off? Should I take a day off? Should I act like I'm hurt? All, all these things run through your mind. All these little ways out. But the team that, that battles together and it continues to push themselves to pursuits of the ball, an excellence of execution as far as communication, alignment, assignment. That is when you birth a championship defense coming into the regular seasons because all the work you've done during training camp. So uh, the only unfortunate thing is that the way the, the rules are set up by the CBA, uh, you can't practice as long as they used to when I played. So it's kind of hard to take yourself through that wall to that moment uh, to push yourself to that kind of boundary. But uh, the defensive leaders, we can – uh, we can find ways to uh, uh, within the boundaries of the CBA to, to to make sure you you put enough pressure on the guys to really uh, mold and come together. Yeah, and I, I want to see the battles. There, I mean, not just the position battles, and we've looked at them: running back, razor thin, wide receiver, linebacker. Um, we haven't talked about the safety position yeah, at gonna all. That's going to be a battle, and and that's going to be a battle. But I like the safeties, the top five safeties that are there, and their role in special teams. But then the daily battles that you've alluded to. Offense against defense, because I started to see it in OTAs. I started to see it in the mini camps. But OTAs and mini camps ain't training camp. As we close, the stomach, we're sitting here, my stomach's starting to turn. 26th training camp, I know what they mean. I get to be in front of the team the night before it all starts for a minute. And the tension that you feel as we close, what is that tension? Man, it's, it's excitement. It's, 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 a, it's a culmination of all the work, the hard work, all the lifting of the weights, the sacrificing the time being with your family and your friends in the off season during the OTAs and stuff. And now you got a time to, to kind of let it, let it all out, let it grow, let it, you know, you, you always want to see uh, uh, all your hard work bear good fruit. And that's what training camp is. It's a chance for, to, to show the coaches that you're an ascending player, that your abilities can reflect on this team in a positive way and result to, guess what, wins. Wins during the 2019 season. Not only uh, uh, resulting in that, but your development as a, as a player, your development as a part of the Chiefs' kingdom, your development uh, as a personality on and off the field, it gets started here in training camp. We're going to build, we're going to build, we're going to build, and then – 
pow, the season starts, man. It's, it's a beautiful thing. That, Like you said, that emotion, that gut-wrenching feeling, uh, it hurts. Your belly, it starts to hurt, but it, it needs to hurt. It need, you need to feel that grind. You need to embrace the suck, what we call it. Embrace the uh, uh, that, that pain until you can um, um, birth those wins during the regular season. And that pow could be a fraction of an inch in a special teams play that could be just the tipping point to get you to a Super Bowl in the upcoming season. He's Sean Barber, a.k.a. Barbershop. He'll be at camp. I'll be there too. Mitch Holtis, voice of the Chiefs. We'll see you in St. Joe. Thanks for listening to the Chiefs' official podcast network. Ten, five, touchdown! Lock it down! And the celebration begins at Arrowhead. <laughs>